Good afternoon. It's Teresa. We're back in the garden for a study in Romans chapter 13. Remember, Paul is speaking to the Jewish church in Rome, and they were very persecuted by the Romans. They were not treated right, yet the Romans had authority over the Jewish people, over the Jewish church. And it was a hard thing for Paul to write to these people how they should respect authority. And it's a hard thing for us sometimes to think about respecting authority, respecting parents, respecting bosses, respecting husbands, respecting police, respecting the government. So let's see what Paul has to say. He says, everyone must submit to governing authorities. That doesn't leave anyone out. He says everyone, and he means it. For all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. My goodness. We thought electoral votes is what got people elected into the presidency. That's not what scripture says. Scripture says these positions of authority have been placed there by God, either to bless us or to curse us. One way or the other, no one gets put in any office unless God ushers them in. We think our one vote counts towards electoral votes and then our electoral votes go towards who's going to be in the office, but that's not in alignment with scripture here. So let's just look into this a little bit further. So anyone who rebels against authority is actually rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. Well, we don't like the sound of that, do we? There's a lot of times we're not in agreement with things that our government mandates. Yet if it's not morally wrong, we're supposed to obey it. That's what Paul is saying here. Or we will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but it strikes fear in people who are doing wrong. And that is so true. If I'm driving down the road and I'm going over the speed limit, I'm anxious and I'm looking to see if there was a a policeman behind me or a policeman ahead of me or around the corner or over the hill or whatever. But if I'm going the speed limit, I'm doing what's right. It's a speed limit that has been set by those in authority that have determined what is the safest road, the safest speed to go on that road. And so we should abide by it. Because if we don't, some way, somehow, we're going to be punished, either by having a wreck or getting a ticket. I don't like tickets. I don't like paying for them. I don't like doing defensive driving, and I don't like paying the fee that has to be paid to get defensive driving so it doesn't go on your record. And that bit of circumventing the insurance, finding out about my ticket, Paul addresses here. He said, would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Yes. Do what's right and they will honor you. They will respect you. They will leave you alone if you're just obeying the rules. The authorities are God's servants sent here for your good. It's hard for us to think about policemen being God's servants unless someone's trying to break into our house and we're calling 911, right? We need to listen to what Paul is saying here it would be very good for us to listen to what Paul is saying here because it will help us live more peaceful lives. He said, if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. Let's look at the past history in the Bible. God sent the Assyrians to punish his very own children that were worshiping other gods. And they were scattered to the four corners of the earth and never got brought back. You would have thought 
The people in the southern kingdom would have learned by those that got punished by the Assyrians in the northern kingdom, but they didn't. Those in the southern kingdom were punished by the Babylonians. They took them into 70 years of exile and then allowed them to come back under their own restrictions. There was a lot of times that the people that were in charge in the Babylonian culture asked those who had been captured to do things that were morally wrong. We'll get to that in just a minute. But what Paul is saying is those in authority are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. Even back in the wilderness, there had to been a sense of government. So God created one. He created and established the taxes that the people were supposed to pay, or at that time they were called tithes, that people were supposed to pay to the temple. Even the priest had to pay a certain 10% tithe back. Everyone had an amount to pay to help the community keep going. And that's the very next thing that Paul talks about. He says, so you must submit to these servants, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. The next part Paul talks about is taxes. Everyone pays taxes. You go to the store and you buy something. There's a certain tax that's added on to what you're buying, unless you're buying food. And those taxes go towards keeping our roads up, they go towards our welfare system. They go towards paying police officers and government officials. They also go for military strength at all times. A lot of people don't like that. I don't particularly like that. Unless there is a country that is coming against us and we need that power for war. But we don't think about our taxes like that. We think about the government taking our money away from us that we've earned that is so hard. Paul gets real strict about this. He says, pay your taxes too for the very same reasons that I've just cited. These people are God's servants. They're paid by your taxes. They are paid to make sure order is kept. Order was kept in the wilderness. Order was kept in biblical days. And order is kept today. Is it always fair? No, it is not always fair. When it is asking us to do something that is morally wrong, we have the right to say no. Otherwise, we should submit to those in authority and the rules that they make because right here it says they are for the, the authorities are God's servants and they're sent for our own good. Well, let's think about that. I don't know if you've ever had a wreck and policemen needed to come or an ambulance needed to come. Those people were placed in authority by God to come and help you. And you're usually happy that they came unless you're the one that did something wrong and you know you're going to get a ticket. You know you're going to be punished. Well, that's what Paul's talking about. As much as possible, keep a clear conscience. Don't be doing things that you know you're not supposed to do. That includes cheating on taxes. How many people hire accountants to circumvent or to go around a law that is written that says you have to pay this tax for that? That's what most people hire accountants for, not just because they don't want to deal with the figures, but because they want to get out of having to pay something that the government's telling them they're supposed to pay. I don't like paying taxes, but when I understand more clearly why those taxes are being paid, it's a lot easier for me to pay them. Here, Paul says, pay your taxes for the same reasons I told you to respect authority. For government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. I know people that have racked up a whole bunch of bills, buying a whole bunch of things that they wanted, 
and then declared bankruptcy so they didn't have to pay for that stuff. That's not right. That's not fair. You're not going to have a clear conscience doing something like that. If you buy something and you agree to pay it out, you should pay it out and you should pay it out on time. And if for some reason you can't, you should go and talk to the people that you owe the money to and make arrangements to get caught up. But first, you need to pray. Or I say you need to pray. You should pray and ask God if you have been spending your money unwisely and then not able to pay your bills and to help you with a budget, to help you stick to that budget. Paul says, give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those in authority. I don't know if you have ever been placed in a position of authority and someone was disrespecting your authority. If that's never been a time in your life, then you might not understand how hard it is to be an authority and not get respect. We are told by Paul, just like he told the Romans, honor and respect those in authority over you. The Jewish people were not being treated right by the government, yet Paul was encouraging them to honor and respect them and do what they said to do, unless they were asked to do something that was morally wrong. When the Babylonians captured the Jewish people, three of the people that were captured were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were told to bow down to the king, to an idol that was made, an image of the king. And they refused to bow down. And so the king had them thrown into a fiery furnace, a furnace that was so hot that the men that were throwing them in were burned up. Yet when the king looked through the furnace door, he didn't see just three people walking around. He saw four and he questioned his guards. Did you throw three or four people in there? I see four people in there. And so the king called out Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come out and they came out their clothes were not burned they weren't even singed they didn't even smell like smoke when the king told them if they didn't bow down he gave them one last chance to bow down and if they didn't bow down he was going to throw them in the fiery furnace and they told him our god will protect us and even if he doesn't we are not going to disobey him we are not going to bow down to another god God did protect them. Daniel, their friend, was protected similarly when there was an edict given that no one was supposed to bow down to any god except the king of Babylon. When that happened, or king of Persia actually, when that happened, Daniel continued bowing three times a day in his window and praying to his god. And the same men that had the king to write this edict were trying to trap Daniel because the king was very favorable to Daniel. And Daniel continued serving his God and worshiping his God. And these men saw him and ran back and told the king, hey, we know somebody that's bowing down to another God. And the king said, we're going to throw him in the lion's den. But the king didn't know it was Daniel. And when Daniel was thrown in that lion's den, the king prayed all night long because Daniel was his friend. And Daniel prayed all night long. And all the other people that were Jewish that were there in captivity were also praying. And the next morning, the king, who had not slept all night, ran to the lion's den and said, Daniel, my friend, are you alive? And he said, yes. An angel of the Lord kept these lions' mouths closed. And Daniel came out. If the government is telling you to do something that is a direct opposite of what God is telling you to do, you have the right to say no. God will protect you. Or if the government is telling you to do something 
that you know God has told you not to do, God will protect you. When King Herod found out that Jesus had been born, he first ordered all the midwives to kill any Jewish male children that were born. But the midwives disobeyed and told the king that the Hebrew women were so strong, they had their babies before they even got there. The truth is, they didn't kill these male children because they knew killing a child was wrong and against God. So here is the difference in honoring and respecting those in authority. You are to honor and respect them unless they're telling you to do something wrong. Even if you don't agree with what they're saying, if it's not morally wrong, you are supposed to obey. Then he goes on to say, Owe nothing to anyone except your obligation to love one another. You buy a car or a house, sooner or later, your debt's going to be paid. But Paul is saying, you never pay off this debt to love one another. He says, if you love your neighbor, you will actually fulfill the, all the requirements of God's law. Remember when Jesus was asked, which commandment is the greatest? And he says, love the Lord with all your mind, all your heart, and all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you're loving your neighbor that way, you're not going to be doing anything against them. Paul goes on to say, for the commandments say you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. Remember, covet means you are wanting something that your neighbor has and you're willing to do anything you can to get it because you don't think they deserve it and you think that you do. You're not supposed to covet. He says, these and other such commandments are all summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. Love does no wrong to others. So, love fulfills the requirements of God's law. Then Paul says, this is more urgent for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Now, the disciples believed when Jesus ascended that he was going to be coming back real soon. That was over 2,500 years ago. But he's still coming back soon. He's still one day closer today to coming back than he was yesterday. And when you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, every single day after that, the Holy Spirit is grooming you to be more like the image of Jesus Christ. You are better than the day before because you're learning more and more. This saves you from yourself and brings about a complete salvation because when Jesus comes back, he's going to give us new bodies with new brains and new hearts that won't even think about doing wrong. Paul says, wake up for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living. I bet you know somebody that lives right. And I bet you see a light shining inside of them. During the time that we're here on earth, we're supposed to do good and we're supposed to repent when we do wrong and know that we're forgiven if we have Jesus in our hearts. It's like this orange flower over here, over my shoulder. It has a period of time that it is going to bloom and then it's going to die. We know that we will be given a new life, a new body, a new chance in bodies that aren't going to decay, in bodies that aren't going to get sick. And we're not going to do anything to hurt anyone, and no one's going to do anything to hurt us. It's called heaven, heaven living, peaceful living. It's a good thing that Jesus is going to bring back. But Paul tells us now 
to remove our dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on that shining armor of right living because we belong to the light or we belong to the day and we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling or jealousy. Can you remember the last quarrel you had with someone? Did you leave it that way? Maybe you could just contact them and say, hey, can we meet? And the first thing you do is give them a hug. You still might not see eye to eye with them. But if you're both believers in Jesus Christ, you do see heart to heart. And Jesus says to live among all people with as much peace as policy as possible. And this last part, or in quarreling or jealousy, if you're jealous of something that somebody else has, maybe you should take inventory of everything that you have. You just might find you have a lot more than what you thought you did. And if there is something in your past, that you're not happy about. You look over your shoulder and, and that's what you see. Just ask God to forgive you and if needs be, another person. So when you're looking over your shoulder, you're seeing something good, like a beautiful flower. Paul says, instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. The enemy is always trying to get us to think of ways to, go, to get around what God has told us to do. The enemy is always trying to put thoughts in our mind to get us to do something other than what God has told us to do. Especially if it has something to do with someone in authority. If you can't respect those in authority, then you can't respect God because he's the one that placed those people in authority. Even for the Jews there in Roman days, God allowed the Romans to be in authority over the Jews and punish them because they were still in their idolatry practices. They were still doing things they were not supposed to do. They were still disobeying God. That's all we have for today. Do you truly honor those in authority over you? And if you don't, ask God to give you the grace to do it. You're going to be punished one way or the other if you don't. Uh, might not be a out in the open punishment, but God sees everything we do. He knows every thought we think, and he knows what's in our hearts. So, take every thought captive before you act. Make sure it's an act of kindness and love towards your neighbor. And if you do that, then you will be doing right. I will see you next week in the garden, and we're going to learn in chapter 14 about the danger of criticism. I'll see you next week in the garden.